Hi, this is Paramdeep from Pristine and today I'll speak about the steps to create an integrated financial model. So just to summarize the uh, various steps, uh, these are the steps uh, to create an integrated financial model. I'll take you through the model step by step and also I'll show you in the model how uh, I'll show you in the model how these steps are to be followed. So the first step in creating any integrated financial model is essentially to have a good layout for the model. So if I were to just uh, summarize it, so for example, in this particular layout, uh, you can see that the layout is very clean. One, two, it has all the units specified. So for example, all the uh, units are in dollar million or in number of days and so on. The other thing is that uh, there is a clear demarcation for the uh, balance sheet assumptions, the revenue assumptions, the cost assumptions and the asset assumptions. Uh, you can clearly see that uh, I am using uh, column A as, as my first navigation column, right? In the second column B, I am using it uh, as a second level of uh, sort of the table of contents and I am fixing column E for the year FI05. If I go to the revenue buildup, I still use column E for the FIO5. If I go to the uh, uh, cost buildup, I still use column E for FIO5 and so on. So this gives me uh, an, uh, a simple uh, sort of uh, uh, help in the form that uh, whenever I am calculating anything, so for example, uh, let's say if I am uh, uh, calculating the uh, values for FIO6, I will always uh, know that uh, I have to link column G to column G. Obviously, the opening balances in column G are going to come from column F, right? So, uh, so there are some specific uh, uh, sort of tricks that you can follow uh, to create an efficient layout for your model. And finally, the uh, uh, the goodness or uh, or the value of your model will come through the efficient layout. So when we start creating the model, uh, the first thing that we'll sort of uh, lay our stress on is creating an efficient layout. Uh, I hope uh, that's clear. Yeah, so just to summarize, the first step is sort of creating an efficient layout. Uh, once you're through with the layout, uh, sort of the first technical step in creating any model is essentially uh, inputting the historical numbers for the balance sheet and the profit and loss account. Is that okay? Typically to demarcate uh, between uh, uh, the constants, uh, that's basically the assumptions and the calculations, I use a blue colored font uh, for the uh, uh, inputs or the assumptions and I use a black colored font uh, for the calculations. So uh, just to summarize, the second step would be uh, inputting the historical numbers. For your balance sheet and your profit and loss account. Now obviously once you have the uh, historical numbers for your balance sheet and your p and the next step is to figure out uh, what are the growth drivers. Right, so the next step that we would be following is uh, basically figuring out the growth drivers. Now, as far as the P&L is concerned, uh, the main growth driver is in the revenue is the growth. So year on year growth or the CAGR, the CAGR, essentially uh, the cumulative annual growth rate or the year on year growth rate. So this would give you a trend about the company. So how is the company growing or is it degrowing? Now, based on the revenue, you can almost assume that the rest of the costs uh, would remain as a percentage of revenue. So, I take the percentage of revenue for various costs. Is that okay? So, these costs could be mainly the raw material cost or it could be the, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, manufacturing cost, the cost of goods sold and so on. Uh, even the manpower cost, I can assume as a percentage of revenue. Now, uh, so if I were to just go to my model and show you out here in the assumptions, we sort of uh, build a cost for the revenue. So I'm trying to calculate the year on year growth. Is that okay? For the prices and the volumes. So price multiplied by the volume essentially gives me 
the revenue. Is that okay? Similarly, I, I see the kind of growth that is there in the headcount. I see the growth that is there in my uh, salaries, right? And so on. So uh, some of these uh, I just calculate as a percentage of revenue. Now for the balance sheet drivers, essentially I would uh, calculate the major, uh, the major heads. So for example, I would calculate the number of days of inventory. I could calculate the number of days of payable. I could calculate the number of days of account receivable and so on. So out here I calculate from my balance sheet as you can see these numbers are linked to the balance sheet and the P&L. So these numbers are not assumptions. These numbers are calculated drivers. Is that okay? So I calculate the uh, uh, number of days of inventory, the accounts receivable uh, and the various other balance sheet numbers. Is that okay? Now once we have these uh, numbers the next thing is sort of making your own assumptions. So you have seen the trend. Now you go about making your own assumptions. So these assumptions are, are forward looking assumptions. So you make some assumptions about the future. Okay. So looking at the trend. So for example, if I go to my model, looking at the trend, I figure out that they were holding uh, around 110, 111 days of inventory in the past. So I'm assuming that they are going to hold 115 days of inventory for the first two years and then they hold 110 days of inventory. Similarly, if I'm assuming that they're, uh, no, sorry, if I take a look at their volume growth, the growth has tapered down. Based on this, I sort of uh, make some assumptions. So the growth has uh, is around 18%, uh, 15%. So I make some assumptions about the price and the volume. So for example, the growth has tapered down in the prices. So I... I make an assumption that they would not be able to increase the prices in future and, and sort of I make some assumptions about the volume. Now these assumptions you will have to sit with the management of the company and then figure out their possible uh, outlook about the future. Right now based on these assumptions that uh, you have made uh, the next step would essentially be uh, projecting your own. So you would be projecting your own balance sheet so you would be projecting the future numbers. Uh, for your profit and loss account and the balance sheet. Is that okay? So the next step that I follow in my model is essentially figuring out so from the assumptions I drive the revenue, the costs, the various costs that I have to calculate. Is that okay? So I drive the various costs from the assumptions. As you can see, these are all linked to the assumption sheet, right? And uh, based on these, I calculate my balance sheet and my profit and loss account in future. Is that okay? So most of these are linked to revenue buildup, cost buildup or the assumptions. Is that okay? So you can see in the formula bar that they are linked to assumptions. They are linked to the cost and they are linked to, to uh, sort of they are linked to the uh, various revenue buildup that we have. Now please note that while creating this model, uh, there are some things that cut across the balance sheet and the P&L. So the things that cut across the balance sheet and the P&L, I'll keep them separate. So for example, in my balance sheet, I have an asset. Is that okay? And the corresponding uh, uh, entry in my P&L is the depreciation. So I will create a separate schedule for the asset and the depreciation. Is that okay? So if I go here, I calculate a separate asset schedule. So I know when the next investment is going to be made. And I calculate its corresponding depreciation schedule. Similarly, if you know that uh, in the balance sheet, there is this item called the debt and along with the debt in the P&L, you have the interest. So I sort of create these, uh, this schedule separately. So if I go to the debt schedule, there's a debt schedule and then there's an interest. Is that okay? So apart from that, if you know in your balance sheet, you have your equity or your reserves and correspondingly your PAT number flows from your P&L into your balance sheet. So I create these uh, sort of uh, these items separately. Uh, I hope it's, it's clear till this part how the uh, model is to be 